Welcome to Spider Society. I'm Spider-Man. Oh, no way. All of us are. It's like a ninja vampire. It, it really is Spider Society. It's not it's not one or two. It's an entire universe of spider creatures, men, women, cats. On and on and on it goes. You're looking here at the trailer to Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is out in Canadian theaters today. Eli is here, very appropriately attired. I thank you for making I the had, effort. I had to. You I just happen to, to have that. Fly my colors. You're, he's were. one of your faves, isn't he? He's the best. There's a reason we have been making Spider-Man stories since 1962, Heather. You see, I used to race home at lunch <laughs> oh, really? in public school for, the, for the noon cartoon, but that is a very different cartoon from yeah. what we're oh, talking yeah. about with the Spider-Verse. Different cartoon, uh, different Spider-Man. Uh, and so let's start there. We are catching up with the Spider-Man of Earth 1610, Brooklyn's own, 15 years old, Miles Morales, there he is. And he is caught in a web between his parents, there they are, and their frustrations and his burgeoning super heroic career. He is a friendly neighborhood save the day guy, but he's also a student with parents in high school and they've got high expectations and he had high grades and you know, the balance thing, he's starting to slip a little. Let's, let's check in with the principal. A minus in English. She's a tough grader. And a B in Spanish. What? Ooh, okay. Miles. Are you trying Ma Mira, to eso es imposible. Calmate, okay. mami. Eso no es my fault. ¿Qué, qué es eso que esto no es mi fault? ¿Tú estás tomando una clase en Spanish? Mom, I just missed a few classes. Oh, just a few classes. Well, what's a few? I mean, you know, like five. Five? five. They don't understand because he's got so much potential. But of course, he can't tell them this secret that he carries. And so there's this wall that's between him and his parents. The only person who really gets it is a literal other world away. There she is, Spider Gwen. She's got her own father who's also a police officer. She's got that friction and frustration, but she's in another multiverse until one day she pops out of a portal, tempting him to play hooky, even though he's grounded. Come with me, filling his head with visions of an entire team of spider folk. Most of us wouldn't be here. See a face in the Parisian. Wait, 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 hold on. The Mona Lisa. There's an elite society with all the best spider people in it? Okay, so there's this lady, Jess Drew. She writes uh -huh. motorcycle. motorcycle. Oh my gosh, I'm learning so much from her. Oh yeah, I, I've learned a lot of stuff too. I leveled up my whole thing. See? Oh yeah? Let's see that. Let's go! Gorgeous, so playful. But also what we're learning now is that there is this team of spider heroes and they're basically trying to kind of clean up a bit of the mess that was left over from what Miles did last time in the first film. And they don't need Miles Morales. In fact, they don't want him. But because Gwen is involved and because he's a good Spider-Man and he has that sense of duty, soon he's traveling to other realms, meeting new iterations of arachnoid inspired heroes like this one where it looks like India is the center of the universe. Take a look. I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm glad you asked, new guy. My name is Profitra Prabhakar. I live in Mumbai. This is where the traffic is. This is also where the traffic is. There's traffic here too. Being Spider-Man is so easy. I fight a few bad guys. Quick break for chai with my Maya auntie. I love chai tea. What did you just say? Chai tea? Chai means tea. You're saying tea tea. <laughs> If you're a Deadpool fan, you might recognize the voice of the cab driver, Karin Sony. Nice little upgrade there as Provinter, a, a version of Peter Parker. Okay, this is fun. And you're in all the clips, Eli's laughing, really enjoying it. You said gorgeous there. Oh. I mean, you were a big fan of the of the look and the art yeah. style of the original. Has it evolved any? It has, and I think what's amazing is that it's established its own visual vocabulary. So the first film was really kind of cute and meta and reminding us like, yes, he's a hero, but it was also a comic book and even putting like comic book effects into the film with like thwip and sound effects and panels. But now that it's established that, it has the freedom to be, to push back 
respect those boundaries, to be expressive and positively experimental. When you saw, we see a shot of Gwen and the walls behind her pulse in pastels. Sometimes it looks like a Kadinsky mural, just abstract shapes floating in the background. When we meet Spider Punk, his colors are faded and edges are ragged like a concert poster left out in the sun to wilt. But what still anchors all of this, what keeps it from being just a million hyper self-referential niches is at the end of it all, it's about Spider-Man. The reason he has lasted so long since Stanley created him in 1962 is yes, he's the most malleable, but I think the most moral superhero under the quips, there he is, is a kid just trying to do the right thing. And it's the accuracy of that bond between Miles and his parents that allows this film to be so creative, to be experiment and be original. Let me give you a beautiful moment. They just met Gwen, Gwen left, Miles is watching her leave, the mother is watching him, watching her. Take a listen. I can hear you being quiet, Mom. I um, hope I didn't ice your game, man. No one my age says those words in that order. It's just hard to see my little man not be my little boy all the time. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's the emotional accuracy of this storytelling. That's why it can be so vivid. It can be so fun. It can be so creative because it understands the story that it's telling, which is about really this family and this boy and his parents. And where does this go next, do you think? I mean, that is the one caveat. Like, I think this is even better than the original. Mm -hmm. And I love the 2008 film. And I think the heart of it is now Miles. It's not just about anyone can be Spider-Man. And not just all the fun, like, there's a spider pig, a spider robot, there's a spider cowboy on a spider horse. <laughs> like, this is a movie that screams for a pause button. I was in the theater. People were yelping with recognition at the cartoon cameos. But the center of it all is still Miles figuring out the kind of hero he wants to be. But here's the one tiny negative. It ends on a cliffhanger. It lacks closure. We're gonna have to wait until March 2024 to see how this story revolves. Because this is the trilogy, right? This is, no, this is a two-parter. Oh, it's a two-parter. And I'm happy that they didn't squeeze it all into like three hours. Okay. It doesn't feel like they're stalling, but we're gonna have to wait. A cliffhanger. Nine months. <sighs> I was counting them up. So wait, wait. Here's a cliffhanger. I haven't even asked what your rating is. I, I have no complaints. I am blissfully happy. Five out of five. Go see it. What? There you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Guitar riff. There he is. A little spider punch so there. Very Fantastic. nice. Eli, thank you so much. My okay, pleasure. five stars for Eli and uh, the Spider-Verse. Thanks a lot. See you next week. All righty. Stop what you're doing and stop Spider-Man. You? 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 You